This is a video for Jason, the person who goes by the money bag right here, who slid into my DMs before my TikTok account got deleted. I didn't get the chance to give him a full response on some feedback based off of these messages here that I'm gonna pop up around the screen because I really wanted to take the time to give him the best advice possible. He is currently 16 years old and is about to turn 17. He is broke and he is sick of living the life that he is currently living and he kind of wants to live this life like me. I'm just gonna read to you guys what he said in the DMs. He said, my current situation in life is I'm addictive a bit. It's a THC and I'm still in high school. I'm able to work hard and I have so much passion of being successful and wanting to succeed. I'm currently doing summer school, my last week of school. I finished everything I could to the best of my abilities, but I don't know what's next during my senior year. I want guidance from there on. I'm only 16, turning 17 really soon. I wanna live like you. I wanna be able to have my own house in peace when I'm older to myself. I'm wondering what steps I can take to further live the life I dream. The life I'm after is hard work and making the right choices for myself. I'm up an hour early, it's 7.55 during my time and I have school in an hour and 30 minutes. I should be free whenever, but if you can shoot me a text, I would be happy. Thank you for your time. Now something that he mentioned that I wanna kinda of point out is that he's very addicted to THC. The thing is that these bad habits will compound and will most likely lead you to wor even worse habits than just THC. So just having THC around will also lead you to the probability of you smoking vape and nicotine, heavily drinking, and going to parties and things that you don't necessarily need to be around. And now for myself, I used to smoke THC. And the reason why I smoked THC was literally because I was just surrounded by people that didn't care about what was best for me. Basically what happened, I was so down bad because of a girl and I was in a car full of friends and they had a bong out and they basically just gave me every reason as to why I should smoke. And how they got me to smoke was by using the girl that I really like to frame it in the way that, hey, if she did it, it should be okay for you to do it. And because I was so down bad in that situation and the amount of pressure that I was dealing with already, I took a hit of that bong. And that really just goes to show that the people that you have around you has a significant impact as to how you will play out your life. Because that day on, after I smoked out of that bong, I started becoming a very heavy reliant smoker for the next four or five years. It became a very addictive behavior that led me onto vaping, drinking, and going out to these parties and hanging around a bunch of people that don't have any significance to my well being. Now, believe me when I say this, I have nothing against smoking THC. But however, you also got to keep in mind that your brain as a 16, 17 year old is not fully developed and where it needs to be. You are still young and you are very vulnerable to making very stupid decisions. So, the best thing that you can do right now is to just get off the THC and start developing these really good habits that will only compound into better habits so now way you can start living the life that you want to live at the young age that you are currently at. Think about it. Every single bad habit that you have had has created a ripple effect to lead you to worse and worse and worse habits. If you reverse engineer that entire situation right there and think about good habits, those good habits will only compound and create a ripple effect to introduce better habits into your life. Like going to the gym, journaling, creating positive affirmations to remind yourself and reinforce that you will become successful one day, that you do not suffer from anxiety, whatever that might be. Now, obviously it is clear that you wanna become successful, but like I said before, certain habits create a ripple effect and could lead you to hanging around the wrong crowd. As a matter of fact, hanging with those kinds of people almost costed me my life. One night at four in the morning, I was hanging out with these guys in this one place called the Devil's Punch Bowl, which was around my hometown. And basically what happened that night was there was this guy that was trying to rob us and he pointed a gun at my head. And at that moment, I was just so in shock that I thought it was fake. That night when I had that gun pointed to my head, I really had to rethink the people that I wanted to surround myself with. Because I knew that if I continued to hang out with this group, that opportunity of death would come around again. And the thing is, is that these people that I was surrounding myself didn't give a fuck about me. They didn't give a shit of what my goals were, what I wanted to do with my career. You gotta be very mindful of the people that you surround yourself with. You wanna surround yourself with people that have, that can hold very highly intellectual conversations because that will only contribute to your success in the future. The best way to stay poor is to listen to poor people on how to get rich. And it's the same thing when it comes to surrounding yourself with poor people, or in other words, hanging around people that don't share the same common goals and values as you do. And the reason why that works is because you are literally just going to feed off their energy. There is this saying that goes, you are the summary of the five people that you surround yourself with. And if you're surrounding yourself with bad people, then you will become that next. You gotta keep away from people who do not contribute to you becoming your best self. While they are partying, you are working. While they are smoking, you are reading. While they are sleeping, you are at the gym working on your body. While they are eating all that junk food, you are eating healthy food and you're drinking natural spring water and you're doing everything in your power to take care of your gut. You always gotta be that person that can be ahead of the curb 
Take that risk when other people won't take that risk. Make that investment when other people won't make that investment. Because what you're trying to do is become the best version of yourself. You need to keep away from anybody that is keeping you away from becoming 2.0 you. Now, what's ironic is that you're basically getting into your senior year. Now, your senior year is basically like the, oh, oh fuck moment. Like, you gotta get a degree, you gotta graduate, you gotta do everything in your power to get the good grades so now we can go to a good college or university. Now, for me, I actually had two big oh fuck moments. The first one was when I was 18 years old and I wanted to become a filmmaker and get a degree in film. I enjoyed creating videos, I loved creating. I thought that it would be smart to get a degree in film school and I was tricked into believing so. The second oh fuck moment was literally six months after when I realized, damn, do I really need a degree in film school? Because it just doesn't make sense to spend so much money on a degree for film. So instead, maybe I should get a degree in nursing that is more applicable for a degree. It's more respectable. And that's exactly what caused me to get into nursing school because comparing the two degrees, nursing and film, nurse made more sense. Now I understand that the pressure coming into senior year is probably making you nervous as fuck. But no matter how much pressure there is of your family telling you to get a degree, telling you what to do, taking control of your life, no matter what, do not allow that anxiety and overthinking to get into your head from achieving your goals. Sidetrack and very important, make sure that you do get good grades, that you are a good student. Don't be that arrogant kid who's not gonna listen to their teachers or be a good person, at least give an effort and just try. That is still very important. But also at the same time, make sure that you identify the competitive edge that you can have over your classmates just by doing the things that your classmates want. Focus on the goals that you have. Like if you really wanted to start that business, then don't put all your conscious attention into something that does not pertain to you building your business. Senior year is going to be tough and you're gonna have a mix of emotions of wanting to get a degree and applying for school with the pressure of your parents and your teachers or your counselors. But just try to have that absolute tunnel vision on what your goals are and what your end goal is and do something right now to get the job done. And for your information, I already understand that there is so many people out there like your adults, your aunts, your uncles that are gonna say, you know, high school is one of the best times of your life and you don't wanna miss out on this on the big opportunity because once high school's done, you know, you're never gonna experience something like that again. Fuck that, bro. Take the time to do the things that your classmates aren't doing because it's only gonna get you 10 steps closer to your goal and 10 steps further away from them. I don't mean to over exaggerate this, but there has been so many people from my high school that used to party, that used to hang out with all those popular kids that hit me up now. Trust me, I was a loser in my class, but they hit me up now asking me what I do for my business, how I'm living such a lavish life. This also includes the people that are applying for business degrees and all these programs. They hit me up for business. This is literally one of the text messages that I got from one of my high school classmates that had like a 90 average telling me that she hates the corporate life. If you really wanna start a business, then you gotta stop falling into the actions that will make you an employee. You gotta do the actions that will make you a boss. And I'm glad that you said that you're a hard worker because most bosses usually start off as employees. They start off as really hard workers and hustlers. So once you learn to maintain those addictive behaviors and you learn to step away from the crowd that's keeping you complacent, focus on working hard, taking care of your health and developing your mindset. And this is probably some really cliche things to say because you've probably heard it from so many other podcasts and other things, but I'm just gonna repeat that and reinforce that. On another note, it's always gonna be important that you have some sort of cash flow coming in. So look to get a minimum wage job. It doesn't matter how you feel in the moment of working that minimum wage job. If you can, also find some side hustles where you can get paid under the table, becoming a move or cutting grass or doing something that will help you get that extra income or extra side cash. When I was in my senior year, I used to work at this pizza place called Boston Pizza. And then on the side, I would pick up these side hustles where I would become a mover helping other people move from one house to another and getting paid under the table. I was making around like 17 to $20 an hour doing that. On top of that, I was also driving these 17 to 24 foot trucks just to make some extra money. Another thing that I used to do was go on Facebook Marketplace and I would go to the free section and I would find any items that people were giving away for free so then I could flip it for a profit, which was like something that Gary Vee used to do with all these garage sales and stuff like that. Since you are so young, just do anything that you can to get as much cash flow into your bank as possible. And don't spend it on things that you don't need. Don't spend it on something stupid. You don't buy new shoes, don't buy new clothes. Just be happy with what you currently have right now. You need to be able to save that money so then that way you can reinvest it into more opportunities like mentors, programs, courses, and so on. You don't wanna trade your time for money no more. You wanna be able to use the money that you have that you've saved up to make it work for you. Now, I don't know if you're working a job right now, but I'm sure it fucking sucks. And I'm sure that while you're working in there, it just feels like you're digging yourself into like a deeper and deeper grave. But in order to get yourself to surface level, you just gotta keep on climbing up. So whatever it is that you're feeling, whatever it is that you're going through, 
Whatever emotions, just let it be. What you are doing is temporary. You're not gonna be working there forever. And what you can do is that you can create a timeline and a deadline on when you wanna quit that job. When you do that, you'll be able to discover the steps that you have to take in order to get out of it. And that in itself will be very easy as soon as you stop hanging around with people that drain your energy. To a lot of the people that I work with, I literally tell them that you are either the sheep or the shepherd. And you have the privilege and the opportunity to do what you can right now to completely change your life. My bad guys, I thought that the mic died, but aside from that, you only only live once. Now I know that it may feel that you're just juggling too many plates and that if you drop one the rest of them will just drop on the floor and just shatter. And the only reason you'd ever be in that situation is if you have anxiety, you overthink a lot, you know you procrastinate too much and oftentimes it leads to perfectionism which kind of just keeps you complacent and in one place. It doesn't allow you to take it to the next level and just grow. But if you're constantly in that state where you're continuously self-sabotaging yourself, realize that there are two things that you need to be aware of when it comes to these negative actions or emotions. And that is the controllable and the uncontrollable so what you should do is take out a piece of paper and write down all the negative things that are currently happening in your life let's just say for example um, it's vaping that's something that you can control all you have to do is just stop buying the next vape or completely throw it out if you can't control it let it be embrace it and just figure out a way to really just enjoy the moment or do something else that will keep your mind occupied from thinking about that particular negative emotion. You're just going to have to learn how to accept that for the rest of your life you will be a work in progress and that you're going to have to enjoy the journey and the process of, of growing. Now obviously you wanna win, you wanna live in a building like this, I, I get it. Now I wanna take it back a little bit and I wanna tell you exactly how you can win and start building those really good habits and do it in a fast time frame. Now the best way to really get there with speed is to set up a timer. Now Alex Hermosi actually does it. He sets a timer off for 45 minutes and in that 45 minute time frame, he's trying to get as much work done as he can as possible. Now for me, what I do is I like to go on Google Timer and I set up a timer for 50 minutes and I'll go 50, 10, 50, 10, 50, 10, 50 minutes of that being work, 10 minutes of that being a break. And what that allows me to do is to get into a flow state and if I'm not satisfied with the work that I have done in that 50 minutes, I'll just set up that timer again and just go again. When that timer is going off, I'm literally squeezing as much tasks as possible. And it's going to feel like you are trying to submit a paper at 11.59 to your teacher so you don't get that fat zero. So while setting that timer, it's going to allow me to get into the zone to really just put as much effort in as possible to get as much work done. And if you do that every single day for two to three hours, you will be so ahead of the game and you will outperform your competition. The rule set that you should have is that all your conscious attention is going to be put into developing your mindset and doing anything in your power to get as many tasks as you can done within that time frame. Literally gonna allow yourself to get into that hustlers and killer mentality and tunnel vision to complete the goals that you have set for yourself. Now I know in the beginning of this video I started talking about you know saving money and reinvesting into yourself, which brings me to another point about all these online courses and programs that you see on the internet. You're going to have to look extremely hard to find somebody that is super authentic, knows what he's talking about, so then that way they can guide you to the position that you want to be. I've had so many people say, okay, like what's the way on how you become successful without the course version because it doesn't work? And it's just like, you really undervalue the amount of information that is in that course or in that program to get you to the next level because the information that they teach inside those courses and programs are literally things that the school system does not want to teach you. If you get into a course or a program where you make that $1,000, $2,000 investment and you believe that you've got scammed, really just take a step back and look more and find somebody that is authentic to work with. Just because you got scammed the first time doesn't mean that you'll get scammed the second time. So don't be afraid to take that other risk. There's gonna be so many times in your business where you're gonna lose a shit ton of money. And also on the flip side, you will gain a lot of money or make a lot of money. Just continue to keep digging and looking for people and connecting with people until you literally hit gold. Something that I learned about being a consultant and being in this space is that they are, there is always gonna be people that are going to talk negatively about you. And I've been, I've been called a guru. I really don't give a shit. And the reason why I don't give a shit is because I have set my intentions into helping as many people as possible within my program to become a better version of themselves and make money online in an ethical way. And you should be looking to do the same thing when you start out your business. And that there will only be a select few people that you are trying to impact that will actually believe what you are saying. The people that I work with who I give up my $1,000 per hour rate to them know exactly what I'm talking about. And the thing is, is that the people that say that these types of people are scammers are also the retards that have not put in the full amount of work that was needed in order to achieve the goals and the guarantee that they have set. They don't like the hustle, it's not for them, and the reason why they fail is because they completely stopped. And because they stopped,
stop, they don't get the results, which leads them into this negative spiral of emotions to call and call out other people and telling them that they're scammers and stuff. What I'm gonna say next is gonna be extremely cliche, but you gotta be so delusional to believe into something that you have not seen yourself or achieved yourself. Because the thing is that you've seen other people achieve it and you are no different than that person. The amount of time that it took that person to become successful in the domain that they are currently succeeding in, you have to be able to spend the same amount of time as them to get there. So look to get a new mentor, take a calculated risk, no matter what the cost is. And respectively, the cost should not matter. Think about Cristiano Ronaldo, one of the best soccer players in the world, LeBron James, one of the best NBA players in the world. They spend millions and millions of dollars on their health and on their coaching to keep their body at peak performance and become the greatest of all time. And don't say something like, oh, it's easy for them because they're rich, you know, they're lucky. Don't make luck a factor into your life because all these athletes did not start off as rich. They had to work their way up to become the greatest of all time and it's the same way that you're gonna be able to do it in your own business. You can make luck not a factor just by doing more work. You can put more time into taking more notes, starting a new product, testing out a new idea, putting on that timer 50 more minutes just so you can grind. Alex Ramosi says this a lot, but volume negates luck and everything is about reps. The more you do, the easier it gets. And the easier it gets, the higher the bar is gonna to continue to rise. At times when you think that you've hit the most pivotal moments in your business and that you have peaked, you're gonna find out that there's another book to read, that there's a new course to learn, that there's new information out there that you have to inherit, so then that way you can make more money, but not just make more money, but become a better version of yourself. And there has been so many times in my journey where that has happened. I literally started making TikTok videos last year, then I started making YouTube videos. After the YouTube videos, I'm on YouTube ads, and now I'm making these little mini documentaries and stuff like that about my life. The bar will continue to rise as you continue to grow. But the only way that you're gonna be able to get to that point is if you just do more work. You can't rely on luck. Don't make that a factor, but however, you can rely on volume and the amount of stuff that you do. And here's the thing when it comes to starting your business. You are going to fail, but even after you fail, you're gonna live. You're gonna live no matter what, even after hearing a no. You'll live after failure. And you wanna know what position you'll be in after you fail? A better position than you were in before you did. And as long as you keep going, there's going to be that one discovery win that will completely change your life. Your perception of what rejection and failure is should be translated into learning. And as long as you keep that mindset that you are only learning, that will only compound you into achieving more wins. You have to accept the fact that you are just a student of the game. Now, I understand that you are probably in a tough position right now and you wanna live this life, but something that I'm gonna be very, very honest with you is that in order to get this life, I had to make a lot of sacrifices. I've lost a lot of friends. I've had to cut ties with so many different people that I wish I never cut ties with but it brought me here. And the sacrifices that you are going to have to make is going to be that dragon, which is all up in here. The bigger the dragon that you have to slay, the bigger the hero that you will become. And as long as you keep working every single day, you will become 1% closer to the life that you desire to have. Good luck.